Sam. Please be seated. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the sight of God and in the presence of family and friends to join together Elizabeth Ann Satterfield and Breck Everett Dehart in holy matrimony. Marriage is an honorable journey created and ordained by God and blessed by Jesus Christ our Lord. This journey is to begin with the worship of God and it is to be entered into with certainty, mutual respect, and love. Let us go to God together in prayer. We look to you now, Father God, to ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit in this day, at this time, and throughout this marriage. Be with us as we celebrate the gift of love that has come from you to these two people. Lord, we come here today in celebration of the special love that you have given to Elizabeth Ann and Breck. We ask you to watch over them wrap them in your tender loving care, bind them together in your spirit, and let them follow you all the days of their life. Be with them, guide them, and bless them, and let them know that our prayers and our love go with them as they begin this new journey together. Be with us now as we worship and as we celebrate the wonderful gift that comes from only your son, Jesus Christ, and that is the gift of love. For these things we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a wonderful occasion when two people are drawn together by ties of love that are so strong that they become one person. It is a sacred moment when a man and woman see in one another a love that has been given to them by God, and they decide to seal that love through the covenant of marriage. Who blesses Elizabeth Ann as she comes to Mary Breck? Her mother and I. Breck, do you promise to take Elizabeth Ann to be your wedded wife, to live with her in the manner ordained by God, to love, comfort, and honor her, and keep her through good times and struggles, forsaking all others so long as you both shall live. I do. Elizabeth Ann, do you promise to take Breck to be your wedded husband, to live with him in the manner ordained by God, to love, comfort, and honor him, and keep him through good times and struggles, forsaking all others so long as you both shall live. I do. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For our love is strong and passion fierce. It flashes of fire, as a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered all the wealth of one's house in exchange for our love, it would not be nearly enough. Two are better than one, for if they fall, one will lift one another up. The two will withstand, for a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. 
As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Lead a life worthy of your calling with all humility and gentleness, with patience bearing with one another in love. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Your love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another and honor one another above yourselves. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Let all the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let love and faithfulness never leave you behind. For now, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. One thing that Elizabeth Ann and Breck did not know before they asked me to do this. One of my career goals is to give a guest lecture or to teach or to speak here at my alma mater, Furman University. Since this may be my only shot to do this, this may take a little longer than you thought it might. I'm only kidding, we're not gonna go that far. If you would like copies of some of my lectures on the New Testament, I can email them to you, but I doubt, unless you have insomnia, that they're gonna be very much help. A realization that I had in preparation for this day was that we've known each other about four months. Elizabeth Ann, I've known your mother for almost 40 years. Weren't we just riding the bus home from Greenville Middle like last week sometime, Christina? Uh, that's what I thought. You all have been through a great deal to get to this time and to get to this place. When you realize that you're at a moment where you're having to prepare a wedding in the middle of COVID, that is an eye-opening experience, is it not? And you guys have done it with beauty and with grace. Now, this is probably not something that I need to confess, but one of the worst parts of doing weddings is, especially for people you don't know well, is the premarital counseling sessions. So you think to yourself, what am I going to say to these people? Are they even going to be willing to talk to me? They don't know me from Adam. And on top of that, because it is 2020 after all, we had to do it by Zoom. So that's how we went about our premarital counseling. But these sessions were completely the opposite of the norm of what I normally have had in premarital counseling because both of you were so talkative and engaging and open. You are who you are. And you are not afraid to show who you are to one another or to other people. And that made it very, very easy to do. Breck had that serious yet laid back side and Elizabeth Ann, a little bit like her mom, kind of likes to, to know where things are going and how they're organized and how they're going to be planned. And you were still so willing to talk and to listen and to learn. And that's what made it great. We shared dog pictures. We shared dog stories. We talked about good bourbon. All the great things that you talk to your minister about, of course. Breck, I was really expecting a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. So if you get on to that, you, I will be more than happy to accept that. But there wasn't a hint of hiding or embarrassment between either one of them or in how they talked to me. And that openness and willingness is what makes these two a great couple. It's what makes for a successful relationship. Now, a lot of times people think that God wants our awesomeness. God doesn't want our awesomeness. He wants our willingness. And if we are willing to love one another the way that God has commanded us to love one another through his son, Jesus Christ, then you have a really good chance at a successful relationship. Love is not easy. It is hard. It is difficult. And those hardships quite often have nothing to do with either one of you, kind of like trying to plan a wedding in the middle of COVID. 
There's a great scene in the movie A League of Their Own. Now, Breck, I did look for a lacrosse scene in a movie. I could not find one, so we're going to go with baseball. (laughs) Where Tom Hanks says, it's supposed to be hard. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Well, if it was easy, then everyone could just pick someone and get married. You didn't pick just someone. You picked one another. Because you know that there are going to be some hardships in life, but you know that the two of you are best equipped to get each other through those hardships. You look to good examples of people who are ahead of you, who have set the tone for what marriage is supposed to be. You are called to do what God leads you to do, not what everyone else is doing. And both of you have the spirit and the heart to follow that calling. So I challenge you today, continue to be open and be willing. And if you can hold on to those two characteristics and those two traits, then surely God will continue to bless your relationship as he already has. We will continue to pray for you, to lift you up, and to be there for you as needed. But most of all, be there for one another and know that Christ is always with you. Amen. Since the two of you have chosen each other and see no just reason why you should not be united, then please repeat after me. Elizabeth Ann, I, Elizabeth Ann, take you Breck. I, Elizabeth Ann, take you Breck. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To love, honor, and cherish. To love, honor, and cherish. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Breck, if you will do likewise. I, Breck, take you, Elizabeth Ann. I, Breck, take you, Elizabeth Ann. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To love, honor, and cherish. To love, honor, and cherish. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer or for poor. For richer or for poor. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To marry the person God has chosen for you is a joy unparalleled in human life. Brett, please take this ring and place it on the hand of your bride as you repeat after me. Take this ring as a sign of my faith. Take this ring as a sign of my faith. And my commitment to our love. And my commitment to our love. Which has no beginning and no end. Which has no beginning and no end. Elizabeth Ann, if you would do likewise. Take this ring as a sign of my faith. Take this ring as a sign of my faith. And my commitment to our love. And our, my commitment to our love. Which has no beginning and no end. Which has no beginning and no end. Let us go to God together in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we offer these two people into your hands, into your peace into your love and your care as they begin their life together. Let it be a life that is lived in you, for you, and from you in your Holy Spirit. Lord God, we know that not all days are going to be as joyous as this one. Not all days are going to be easy. But that is why you lead, guide, and direct us. And we pray for you to lead, guide, and direct Breck and Elizabeth Ann on their journey forward from this place. Watch over them, care for them, and let them know that they can always turn to others and certainly always turn to you when they need guidance and they need care. Be with them and guide them and bless them as they move forward. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. The Bible says that what God has put together, let no one separate. Elizabeth Ann and Breck have made this covenant of everlasting union together in the presence of their family and friends. Through this covenant and the power of God as a minister of the gospel, I now pronounce them husband and wife. Breck, you may kiss the bride.
As we finish the ceremony, I want to give you a quick reminder that the ushers will come and, and order you out by rows in order to maintain uh, COVID protocol. So please wait on them to do that after we have the recessional. Let us go to God together in prayer. Now may the grace, peace, and love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us until Jesus comes again and even forevermore. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Breck and Elizabeth Ann Dehart.